Julie Waldorf, juliewaldorf.com. Um, welcome to How to Buy a Home. Well, let's talk about agency. What is agency? There's buyer agency, seller agency, sub agency, dual agency, and transaction broker. So let's talk about seller agency. Seller agency is when you list a home um, and you're working with the seller, you represent the seller as the agent. That makes sense? Buyer agency, when you're working with the buyer, you um, can represent the buyer, um, and that's buyer agency, meaning you work with the buyer and you represent the buyer. Then there's the alternative dual agency, and that is when an agent has a listing that is for sale, then he represents the seller, but then a buyer comes along and wants to buy it. Well, in California, you change it, the agency to dual agency, meaning you represent both parties, the buyer and the seller. And that's if the buyer doesn't have another agent involved. So you represent both parties. And then there is sub-agency. Now, sub-agency is a little tricky. Sub-agency is when you're a listing agent, you, autom you represent the seller. When you're a uh, agent working with the buyer, but there's sub-agency in California where you s represent the seller anyway, even though you're working with the buyer. And the whole method to that madness is, is that you get paid by that seller through the commissions, through via the other company, which I explained earlier. Um, but that's kind of a, you know, a uh, uh, sub-agency is kind of like old-fashioned, doesn't work, doesn't make sense. Because when you work with a buyer, you really get to know that buyer. How can you possibly represent the seller, which you don't know, and work with the buyer. Um, I firmly, by the way, believe in buyer agency. Um, and then there's transaction broker, which I also firmly believe. They don't have that in California, but they do have it in Colorado, which they're a little bit more progressive than California is on this subject. And transaction broker is where you don't represent any party. That's if you have a listing and then you're working with the buyer and there's no other agent involved. You're not the, the dual agent, because how can you really possibly represent both parties? Lawyers don't do it. Doesn't make sense to me. California does it that way. Colorado does not do it that way. They used to, but they changed it and became, um, came up with transaction broker, which actually makes more sense. Where the agent doesn't represent either party, they put the paperwork together, disclose everything properly, um, but they don't have the responsibility of both parties and they're not one side or the other. They're just a neutral party, putting the deal together and making sure everything's happy and healthy and whole. Um, is dual agency like that too? Yes, but they just changed the word from um, um, transaction broker to dual agency. In dual agency, they say you represent both parties, which is kind of silly because representation kind of you know, indicates that you're representing something. How can you represent both, <laughs> right? It, you can't, you know, attorney, like I said, attorneys don't represent the two people getting a divorce, do they? <laughs> Unless it's a mutual happy thing. Can they do that? Probably. Um, I don't see them doing that though, do you? So um, there you go. Transaction broker is a solution and a progressive solution. Colorado's a little bit more with it than California in that, in that manner. Um, dual agency does work. It's been around for years and years and years and years. Um, I try to avoid it. I don't like doing that myself, but I will if I, I'm working with the buyer, with the seller, and the uh, uh, and also the buyer comes along and wants to buy the house. Yeah, to have one less personality in the deal, it makes the deal go a whole lot smoother, and you do disclose everything, and and work through any issues that may come up on the house. So everybody knows what's going on anyway. There's no hidden things going on. You know, you're buying brick and mortar. Let's get the disclosures. Let's get the inspections. Let's get the loan. Let's close the deal. The sub-agency, though, is an old-fashioned, old-fashioned, should be not even allowed, um, out-of-date thing to do. And that's where you're working with the buyer, but you're representing the seller. That is obsolete, in fact. In Colorado, they don't have it. In California, they do. And, meh, um, it doesn't make sense where you're working with a buyer and represent the seller. It's, it's kind of like, 
talking out of the side of your mouth. How can you possibly do that, right? Um, it doesn't make sense to me. It's uh, something where all this agency came up because when buyers had, did have a problem, they felt that there was not disclosure made from their agent. And then when they went to court or um, mediation, they realized the agent wasn't even representing them. They were representing the seller. And they're like, what? I didn't know that. And that's how they all transpired into um, transaction broker and buyer agency. The E35 rule. You have to disclose, disclose who agency that you're working for the seller, but, but working with the buyer. And that's when I started, is they came up with this E35 rule, which I thought was crazy. Um, going, wait a second. Um, yeah, I'm working with you as buyer, but I represent the seller because I get paid by the seller. And I had to have him sign something saying so. It's just crazy. And then they came up with the buyer agency thing, articles in the paper. And so I just cut the articles in the paper and go, here. I remember seeing you as a buyer, and I'll just write in the contract. I represent the buyer, but I am getting paid by the real estate agent on the other side at time of closing. That worked um, with most people. Um, some brokers said, no, you can't do that. We're not going to pay you. And it's like, of course you're going to pay me. I'm taking half the liability off your back. I represent my buyer. You represent your seller. The seller has the liability off of his back, too. So do you. In fact, I should get paid more for being a buyer agent. Because I am taking literally half the liability and taking liability from my buyer, which I have no problem doing because I'm there to cover the buyer's butt. Just like that agent's there to cover the seller's butt. Meaning, oh, let's see. Oh, tip for the seller if I'm working with the seller. Hey, don't be around for inspection. Because if they ask you a question on the house, you know, will you fix this knob? And you say, I'll fix that knob. And, um, um, then they say, well, you don't fix the knob because it wasn't put in writing. And then they come back at you saying, hey, you didn't fix the knob. What's wrong with you? We're going to sue you. And you have conflict. So the less, you know, let them put in writing of what inspections items they want. Don't be in the way. And then if they have any questions, yeah, sure, talk to them. I didn't have anything wrong with buyers and sellers talking to each other after, after all the disclosures are made. Because the seller is required to disclose if that knob is broke, if he knows it's broke. A lot of times on inspections, you don't know, especially on the roof, that the roof is no good on the top left-hand side because there's major wind damage, and who would know unless you're up there? And they're more than willing to usually pay for that because they want their house to be safe and sound and good for the next buyer. Normal, normal people want that at least. <laughs> unless they're getting such a screaming deal that they feel they're giving their house away, then they go, no, you guys are going to have to deal with it. And that, that's that scenario too, but... Usually buyers and sellers are pretty friendly people and they like each other and they're, they're, they're pretty fair with each other if they start communicating if there is an issue. So there you go. I hope this helps you with the agency and how it works and, and where it came from. And, and hopefully California catches on to this transaction broker because that does work. You know, when you're working with the buyer and seller, um, you know, you're there to disclose everything, put the deal together because the paperwork is this thick nowadays and um, make sure everything runs smoothly and everybody communicates well. And that's what the real estate agent does. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great day. Julie Waldorf, juliewaldorf.com. Ciao, ciao.